One of the biggest issues plaguing suppressed pistols these days, aside from reliability, is the ability to holster them. However, the last few years have seen some advances and changes in that truth. Enter the suppressed pistol holster. Stay tuned for more. Hello everyone, James Donaldson here with Contemporary Gentleman, and I'm bringing you a video on suppressed pistol holsters. Naturally, gentlemen's disclosure, um, suppressors are more common than ever, and really one of the biggest problems with them is uh, holstering them suppressed. Now, obviously, if you're going to gun range for some plinking, uh, not such an issue because you're just setting it on a bench, but what about if you're somebody that's actually using these for duty, um, or even for hunting, uh, as is last suppressor videos I've shown, there's a lot of application to suppressors. So, being able to use them in a more wide variety of places is of course going to add to the cause of their usefulness. So, um, kind of before, you either just take it on and off if, if, if you have a holstered pistol, um, or you just don't holster the pistol, um, or you just don't use a can. But of course, uh, a holster is going to uh, negate all those issues. So, what is a suppressed pistol holster? As I said, it's a holster where you can take a suppressed pistol and be able to have it on you, uh, ready to go. Now, we've got some options we're going to go over here. Uh, this one is the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok SD. Um, kind of one of its features that makes it unique is it has a stabilizer here. You are required to have a X300 style light. It'll fit because of the way everything clips in and kind of holds itself and, and balances itself in there. Um, you take a hair dryer and move these to adjust them to your suppressor. That's why I was a little big for my uh, Aurora 2 here. It uh, instead is fit for this when it's on my 17. So, a little bit of limitation there. You can kind of see that uh, overall, though, it gets the job done. The next is the x for v 2 This will, because uh, there's no other things in the way, this will pretty much holster any gun. So even removing suppressors from the equation, some of my long barrel pistols are going to fit on this holster as long as they also have an X300. There's obviously a common denominator among a lot of these setups here. This is also the only suppressor, or holster, where I can holster my Glock 40 while it's suppressed. I just throw the X300 on there, click it in, ready to go. So that is something that really sets this suppressor, uh, holster, holster, suppressed pistol holster apart from these other holsters. Um, now, moving on, we have, uh, first I bought the knockoff, and then uh, after it was pretty decent, I went ahead and bought the actual cry version. Um, for $30. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's another holster like the Exfer where it's great even for a pistol that isn't suppressed. I really like this holster a lot. Um, very little cons to it. So, uh, I do recommend go ahead and buy the one just buying the Cry. I think there's like a $5 difference in the end. Um, now, uh, there's the Franken holster, which uh, really, <laughs> it's trash. I, it's, I made it. It's homemade. This isn't even the right one. I grabbed the wrong one. I made a couple of them because they were trash and uh, all of them are trash. So uh, I will still talk about them. Uh, by the way, to explain, I will be doing a separate video on each of these items. So this being an overview, um, do stay tuned to see specifics on each item. Now, um, so having gone through all those, the criteria I'm going to be judging them is really uh, ergonomics, retention, weapon options, and mounting options. So um, as far as ergonomics, of course, it's going to be all about how easy is it to draw the weapon out. And, of course, how easy is it to replace the weapon. 
Uh, those are two big concerns, as is what is the, the holster like when it's static. So, whereas the cry will kind of flop around, maybe make noise, this operates very much like a regular holster. And then, of course, um, how does it hold the pistol and the suppressor away from your body? Because if you're firing the pistol a lot, it's going to get hot. And it resting against your thigh is probably going to cause some problems. So, something else to consider. Now, retention, um, as I mentioned, how, how is it going to hold the weapon in place? How good a job do these things do um, when you compare them in the end? Maybe the cry is going to be a little too good as uh, separate from the others. You actually put your gun in here and then clip it. So when you draw it, pushing it through your middle finger and then torquing it out and drawing. So obviously a little more complicated than the other ones, but it has its pros. As I said, this is one of my favorites on the table. Now, um, weapon options. So, a variety of weapons. The Cry only works on 9mm and 40 caliber Glocks. That's it. Granted, it can be any of them, so a long barrel, but this will not holster my Glock 40 suppressor or not, X300 or not. You can also run any light. So, if you have a Glock 17 and you have some crazy other surefire type light or some other light, enforce anything, you can use it on this, whereas those lights are not going to work on the Xfer and the Ragnarok because they require X300s. Now, to T-Rex's credit, you can do an X300U or X300V. So for uh, IR light, which is a pretty awesome feature, this has to be not only an X300U, but it has to be the A. It will not work on the B. Things to keep in mind. My Frankenholster, you can do no light at all. And, by the way, did I mention, it's garbage. So, um, moving forward, mounting options. So, the Cry is the most versatile. All of them are going to allow suppressor sights and an optic system. What's impressive about the Cry is when it wraps over, it still leaves space for that optic system. Uh, and I think they made it before that existed. I could be wrong. So, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I don't know if there's an old batch that didn't work that way, but either way, mine works great. Again, I, I already recommend the Cry for sure, especially if you're in the military. So, um, and then of course there's also uh, mounting options as far as how the holster mounts to you. So, I've got a couple that work with the QLS platform, which is outstandingly convenient. And then of course, uh, this garbage right here. And then uh, these, which operate the same way, they've got this clasp but it will clasp over your belt or even molly. So granted, you can get a QLS system that you can click it on the molly. The way this, it just moves, it's very, it's a very good design, especially for a $30 holster. Um, now, getting into pros and cons real quick. I don't want to get into too much, otherwise it'll negate the use of these other videos. But something I want you to know is that all these holsters, except for the Cry and the other knockoff, are that all the guns are going to do what's clear, called clearing leather super fast, where they come up and out of the holster. So some holsters that have a long top to them, the gun muzzle has to come past that to come up. Whereas all of these, it basically comes up enough for the light to be free, and then you can bring the gun up. So, really neat feature about all of them. Um, and of course, the big thing that's a pro is all these holsters, you can holster a pistol while it's suppressed. Um, now getting into it, the cons. Um, retention. So, now I don't, I don't want to be a fool about how I'm doing, saying this. I'm really just pointing out the obvious. I did not get any of these holsters with the intention of finding a holster with um, super tight retention like ALS. I consider Safari ALS system to be the gold standard of holster retention. These are just passive retention and someone can pull a gun out. I have not found a scenario yet to get the gun to come out while I'm wearing it, but for instance if I didn't get the gun clicked in all the way it's very easy for the gun to fall out. These holsters are very much uh, requiring you to holster the gun correctly. So you want to pay extra attention versus 
how you can just throw a gun kind of into an ALS holster. That said, um, the gun clips, pry gun clip and knockoff gun clip, um, <laughs> debatably too much retention uh, because of how they click in, uh, which I'm, saw, I'm sure as you saw earlier, me taking the gun out, um, took some effort. So, um, either not enough or too much retention in terms of comparing it to your average holster that just holsters a pistol. So, um, really not getting into the cons on the individual basis, same as the pros, because i got videos coming out. But in close, I guess, um, you got a lot of options here. And due to the diversity, it, it's tough to choose. Uh, really, each one does some things that another one doesn't. I will probably do a close video saying kind of which one I'd go with. But again, it's going to be hard because of the versatility of the gun clips, especially when it comes to mounting, and then what kind of can or what kind of light uh, versus the x for V2 where you can only use one particular light. And then the x for V2 suffers from something that the Ragnarok SD also suffers from, and the Frankenholster suffers from it a little, which is... Um, Osprey compatibility. So a big issue being not just that the Osprey hangs so low for this to work on these holsters because uh, you can't click the gun in or then out, but the Osprey does not work on a Glock 17 with an X300 on it. Um, you have to have a long enough Glock that the Osprey hangs down in front of the X300. I had no idea until I got this in my possession and went to thread it on and realized it. Um, there are guns with a higher bore axis, such as the FN, FMP45 or FNX45 Tactical, 6 hour 226, 220. Um, there are guns with a higher bore axis, HK P30 series, where it's not an issue, but because of the low bore axis of the Glock, the Osprey will not join the X300 in, on a uh, Glock 19 or a 17, uh, let alone like a 26. So, that having been said, some of these holsters requiring the use of an X300, among other things, you can consider them not Osprey friendly, which is kind of interesting to me because the Osprey does a lot of things that other cans don't do. So when it comes to versatility of your whole entire weapons platform, you're kind of kicking it in the balls with all this. So, um, perfect setup at this point, I just don't believe one exists. Anyway. Uh, if you like the video, please stay tuned for the individual videos on each of these items. I'm really excited to show you the footage and kind of uh, give you the knowledge on what I've learned. I've done a lot of dry fire practice with these, so I've done some range because I knew actual environment was going to be important. But I've done a lot of dry fire to get uh, comfortable with these setups. And so, uh, anyway, I look forward to sharing that information with you. So, um, overall, like I said, if you need one tomorrow and you're just watching this, look at what's most important to you, but my recommendation overall is to stay tuned and see what other information I have. If you like this video, if you're excited for more, uh, like, subscribe to my channel. Of course, helping us on Patreon is a good way to support us, especially in terms of uh, production value. So, uh, until next time, keep your composure.